you know, one of my original objectives with doing this Hold Arn CD collection series, and it's something I kind of lost sight of along the way, is I was hoping that it would, as I was going through my CDs, compel me to get rid of some, a, a fair portion I, I was hoping to, uh, because, you know, I'm doing 90 discs per chapter. I've, this is already chapter 14, and I've got many more chapters to go. I hesitate to do the math as to how many CDs I have right now, uh, but maybe once I do the math, it'll compel me to get rid of a bunch of CDs. I can only hope. <laughs> Wish me luck. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, here we are with chapter 14 of my whole darn CD collection. 90 titles per chapter. I'm showing you warts and all, and there are a few warts in here. Well, hey, they might be warts to you. They're not warts to me. I have them in my collection for a reason. I like them, I think. Anyway, uh, <laughs> some of the ones that I, I remember liking them. Let's put it that way. It's been a while since I've listened to a lot of these, but uh, anyway. Uh, since I have no... Um, I, I just did the last chapter since I have no... Recent arrivals to talk about, let's just dive right in to the next block of 90 CDs. We left off with Bette Midler at the end of the last chapter, finished off Bette Midler. So let's step right on into Midnight Oil. Actually, let's not step into oil, because it might make you slip and fall. Anyway, uh, bad joke. Uh, Diesel and Dust is the name of this album. This is the one that has their big single, Beds Are Burning, the, the, the single that kind of broke them through to the American market. This is an Australian band. And I guess the front man for the band, uh, I believe, after Midnight Oil's heyday, he went into uh, politics and government, and he is a member of the Parliament, I guess. I don't know if that's the name of the equivalent Australian body politic. Uh, but yes, he's um, apparently a staunch activist in regard to the environment and also, I believe, uh, ab uh, issues of Aboriginal Australian concern. So good on him for... Uh, having a career outside of uh, music. Uh, Blue Sky Mining is the <clears throat> next album by Midnight Oil. And all three of these, uh, the third one being Earth and Sun and Moon, uh, I think I picked all these up at a store in Oklahoma City, if I remember correctly. So uh, uh, ties, you know, memories with uh, my visit with Noah and Alyssa are tied to these CDs. So there you go. Now this next artist I discovered way back when this first album came out and... Uh, Really, really cool cool artist. I kind of dropped off on him for a while, but ended up getting back into him. Raul Midon is his name, and he is a uh, guitarist and singer. Uh, kind of like if Stevie Wonder played the guitar. Is kind of, uh, well, kind of, I guess maybe that's kind of like a superficial comparison or something. Uh, Raul Midon is blind, and but he's a great, fantastic guitarist. Uh, mostly Latin uh, rhythms, as suggested by his surname. But yes, fantastic artist. Uh, he features Jason Mraz. Oh, oh, and Stevie Wonder on this album. As well as, oh, oh, I was going to say it features Donny Hathaway, but no, there's one song on here that is a salute to Donny Hathaway. But yes, a wonderful artist. Excellent, excellent music. Nice, mellow sounding. Um, it's primarily just him and his acoustic guitar with maybe some acoustic percussion. Sometimes he gets into electric stuff, but... Fantastic. And his follow-up album, A World Within a World, is also wonderful. So, yeah. Pick Somebody Up is the title track from this one. And uh, what are some of the good songs on here? Uh, Keep On Hoping is the, the duet that he does with Jason Mraz. And, gosh, none of, the, none of the song titles from this first one are coming to mind. But, uh, yeah. Trust me. Excellent artist. Uh, take a chance listening to him if you haven't yet. And then uh, this next one was a bargain bag CD by a group called Migs, and the album is called 15th and Main, I think. It's, uh, oh, 15th and Hope, sorry. Uh, but yes, and it was produced by Phil Ramone. So yes, an, an artist that I'd never heard of before, produced by a uh, producer that I have heard of a lot. So interesting little contrast there. This next artist is one of my favorites. You've heard me talk about him before if you've been watching me long enough. Mika. This is his debut album, A Life in Cartoon Motion. And yes, a lot of his music is 
as colorful as the cover art is on this album. Uh, let's see, Grace Kelly is uh, one of his big hits. Lollipop, My Interpretation. That was not a single, but that is one of my favorite songs on this album. And it was one of the more laid-back uh, songs. And yes, the really um, campy and colorful songs got all the attention when uh, the, the more understated songs are just as good, if not better. So yes, My Interpretation is one of those. Uh, let's see. Uh, Big Girl, You Are Beautiful. That's kind of a, an ode to plus-size women. So, so yes, that was, that was kind of a... a, uh, a Body image conscious song before, you know, what, 10 years before they really started uh, coming up? Well, of course, it means something different when it's sung by a man rather than a woman, but still. Validation of all body types is an important message. Anyway, his follow up album, The Boy Who Knew Too Much, and this is actually the two disc edition, which was uh, originally comes in a digipack, but I actually just cut the inserts out to fit inside of a jewel case. So yes, this has a DVD along with it, as well as one or two bonus tracks on the audio CD. And then his third album, The Origin of Love. And uh, yes, with this one also, I've got the deluxe edition. The deluxe has uh, some acoustic versions and a couple of B-sides and a remix or two on it. So, And this one, as kind of suggested by the cover, this shows Mika uh, toning down stuff, you know, becoming a little bit more subdued in his sound, which is excellent. It kind of brings his his lyricism and sense of melody a little bit more toward the forefront rather than the blast of technicolor, fun, whimsy stuff that I'm probably not describing very well. And anyway, I wasn't sure if I wanted this at the time, but I decided to go ahead and get it because there are a couple... There are like three or four songs on here that are not on his studio albums, but this is a Greatest Hits Collection, Songbook Volume 1, uh, released in Italy, as you can tell by the subtitle, I Più Grandi Successi. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I can, I can usually fake the pronunciation of uh, foreign languages that I don't speak, but uh, with mixed results. Anyway, yes, he features Ariana Grande, uh, Chiara and Pharrell Williams and Red One on this album. So, good stuff. And then his two more recent albums, No Place in Heaven, and again, I've got... Uh, this is actually, I think, is the Japanese uh, edition. Yep, there's the uh, Obi strip. And so, yes, there was the standard edition, the regular del deluxe edition, which had... Oh, it's on here, four bonus tracks, and then the Japanese edition, which has those four bonus tracks and three more. So, yeah, there you go. It's pretty much stuffed to the gills with uh, good songs. And, yeah, it's been a while since I've listened to this one. I can't remember. Uh, and I'm uh, a fan of songs sung in French, and he's got a few of those here down at the, uh, at the end of the track listing. So one other reason for me to pick that one up. And then his most recent album, which was, was it my number one or number two of its release year, uh, favorite album of that year, my name is Michael Holbrook. Loved this one. And again, I've got the Japanese version with two bonus tracks, Sound of an Orchestra and It's My House. And uh, yeah, you should uh, check out my Did I Do a Now and Then video of Mika. I think I did. But uh, yeah, I recommend you check out that video and because uh, I, I, I talk about all these songs in detail. It's been a while since I've listened to this album <laughs> is the case with a lot of these, unfortunately. But uh, yes, it was one of my favorites of the year, uh, suffice to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have shifting gears to a a bit more of a controversial artist. And uh, they, as a result of their controversy, they only made one album, Millie Vanilli. Yes, it, it wasn't, the controversy is, it was not them singing the whole time. They were the, the face and the, you know, the public perception. Uh, the producer uh, pulled the wool over everybody's eyes and uh, told them that it was these two guys singing when it actually was not. They won the Best New Artist Grammy, but it was yanked when this controversy was un 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 yeah, uncovered. So, But 
despite all that, some great, super catchy songs. Some of the catchiest songs of the 90s. 90s or 80s? My, I guess I need to uh, get uh, my eyes checked again and possibly get an updated prescription. The, the copyright stuff is written so small. Uh, anyway, here we have a uh, an Australian Idol winner, possibly runner-up, I can't remember, Rob Mills. Yes, when I was collecting the uh, uh, winners and finalists of the various World Idol shows, this was one of them I bought. Uh, pretty good. It's you know kind of standard fare when you know when you consider the America what the American Idols put out and what the UK pop, UK pop idols put out. It kind of sounds the same kind of thing. Radio friendly pop. You know, so. But hey, I I, like I was in a collecting mood, and I that's one of them that I collected, and one of them that I never got rid of. I got rid of a few of them, the ones that uh, were less mem less memorable. And I guess that one should have been one of them that was less memorable, but I didn't get rid of it. I kept it. So anyway. Uh, next up, we have Country, Ronnie Millsap, uh, his greatest hits. Um, in my cassette collection that uh, my mom's friend Sue uh, gave me some cassettes, and there was a Ronnie Millsap cassette or two amongst them, and I liked it enough that uh, I bought his I bought his greatest hits on CD. No, I bought his greatest hits on CD. Anyway, coming up next, uh, we have a band called Ministry. And yes, it's the same band that uh, does the, I guess it's metal, I guess now is what they do, um, like industrial metal, industrial metal or whatever it is. But this album was very, very different. This was actually 80s synth pop. This is what they started out with. And but after this first album, they went they switched gears and went into more of a metal type of sound. So if you're a big ministry fan but you haven't heard this album, don't expect what you've heard from their subsequent albums on this. This is completely different. But if you like 80s synth pop, you'll like this. Uh, this was playing in House of Records uh, a few months ago. And I, you know, I asked him, you know, asked Ian, hey, this is really cool stuff. Is it, you know, is it uh, you know, Depeche Mode or Flock of Seagulls or something? It's, no, it's ministry. And my jaw practically hit the floor. But uh, so, yeah, I had to buy it. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then we have an artist that maybe I should have more of her stuff, but all I have of hers is Greatest Hits album, Joni Mitchell. And uh, <laughs> you got to love the album cover. It's a great sense of humor on the album cover. But yes, this has all of her stuff. Big Yellow Taxi, uh, California. I love that song. And uh, both sides now, yeah, all of her big hits. <clears throat> and now we come to an artist that I have talked about before. I've got his, I believe I ha it's safe to say I have his entire discography. So sit back, this is going to take a while. Kebmo, uh, love this guy. I don't think, I, I didn't discover him because of my sister's CD collection, but I discovered him at about the same time I inherited my sister's collection, so. Uh, but yes, I love this guy. He's got he's a bit more of a, an optimistic, kind of blues singer. You know, his his blues is a bit more lighthearted, but it's still fantastic. I love it, and hence uh, hence me getting every album he's got. It's a sophomore album, just like you. His next album, Slow Down, and this one actually, if I remember correctly, I found this. This is a a two disc. Set. I think I think the stuff on the second disc is uh, av available on his other albums and whatnot. But I just it was just you know a second disc for from the thing. So I'd already had his one disc version, but I found the second the two disc version somewhere and just I had to pick it up for the souvenir, you know. And then his fourth album, The Door, followed by this is an album of um, family friendly songs that he decided to do. Big wide grin. You gotta love it. Um, Everybody be yourself is the first track on here. Uh, Grandma's hands is a good one. The flat foot flugie, and he does a. Uh, speaking of Joni Mitchell, he does a cover of Big Yellow Taxi on there as well as Isn't She Lovely. So yeah, that was a particularly fun album there. And then uh, perhaps. This is like one of my top three favorite Kebmo albums. Keep it simple. I really enjoy this one. 
uh, what's the one song? Oh, Prosperity Blues. That's kind of like in vein of uh, what I was talking about last t in the last chapter with Bobby, Bobby McFerrin and that song Beverly Hills Blues that he did with Robin Williams. Prosperity Blues is kind of like a uh, spiritual cousin to that song. And then here is a, a covers album that he did. This was, I think, my first exposure to Keb Mo was as a, co a covers album, and I liked it so much I started investigating his other stuff, and it was just as good. Uh, Peace Backed by Popular Demand. And it's got, um, for what it's worth, the Buffalo Springfield song, uh, People Got to Be Free, uh, What's Happening, Brother, The Times They Are Changing, the Bob Dylan song, <clears throat> Get Together, which I can't remember who did that one. Uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, that's the uh, Elvis Costello hit, and Imagine, the uh, John Lennon song. So, A great collection of covers done in the inimitable Kebmo style. Fantastic. Then his next album, Suitcase. And uh, The Reflection, this was the most recent one that I, the most recent gap that I was missing in his collection that I picked up. And, or, or no, actually no, this was the most recent one that I picked up. Blues Americana. This one I picked up, I think, in uh, Dallas, Texas. And then my favorite Kebmo album, Oklahoma. I've got this one on vinyl, too. And then his most recent album, you will be seeing this in my year-end spectacular-ish, hint, hint. Good to be. Love this one. And don't you love the cover art on this? Just that's that's his signature hat that he always wears, and just yeah, I, I love the cover. What can I say? So yeah, very very good, excellent artist. I love Keb Mo, <coughs> as you can tell by the fact that I have all of his CDs. And here here's one we have. Uh, the one that I got from was it my first year of Bargain Bag, or it might have been my second year. An artist called Moan. And the debut is the name of the album, so very good stuff. Now, some of the uh, bargain bag keepers over the years I've gotten rid of, but this is one that I've uh, enjoyed enough to go ahead and keep. And oh, speaking of bargain bag, I think this was in this year's or last year's bargain bag, the album 18 by Moby. Now, this one has uh, We Are All Made of Stars, my favorite Moby song. Granted, I'm not very well versed on Moby to begin with. So it's kind of my favorite Moby song by default. Now we're getting into an artist that um, is one of my not-so-guilty pleasures, I guess you could say, but they make great, or made great music. They are no longer a band. Um, the, the cover of this first album is going to uh, give you the wrong impression of what they eventually, uh, how they eventually turned out to be. The Moffats. Yes, they are a group of four siblings from Canada. And for their first two albums, this was their debut, I think. Uh, they did country, you know, kitty country, obviously, you know, since they were, I think maybe they, maybe they were teenagers. I don't think they were teenagers yet when they did this one. And their other country album I don't have. I, I'm kind of been, sort of been on the lookout for it uh, off and on. But then after that, they dumped the country sound and they went into a prop rock direction, because this was about the time that Hanson was coming up big. So they, I don't know if it was them or their handlers who decided that uh, they wanted to pursue that sound, but uh, they went into a pop rock direction. This is their album, Chapter One, A New Beginning, and this is actually the Canadian version. Yeah, this is the Canadian version, and it has a handful of different songs from the American version. Same album, different... Uh, a handful of different songs. And what do I have in here? Oh, this is just another uh, single from this album, a CD single that had some B-sides on it. I was big in collecting the B-sides from the Moffats at the time. But yeah, some good stuff. Um, if you like Hanson's album, uh, Middle of Nowhere, that, that, that big hit album when they were kids, uh, you'll like this stuff. It's good stuff. But their next album, and which turned out to be their final album, a fact that I still can't get over, because it was so damn good. Submodalities. This is just a fantastic album. One of my absolute favorite albums of all time. It's in my top five of all time. Uh, it's produced by Bob Rock, the guy who produces, or produced for a while at least, uh, Metallica and several other acts. A uh, big, huge Canadian producer. But uh, yeah, this is just great alternative rock, and it actually has a few different styles. Uh, 
the big single was, uh, I mean, it has the kind of title that would be a radio-friendly, kind of suggests that it is a radio-friendly song, Bang Bang Boom. That's what, That was their big hit on Canadian radio. Uh, but the song Just Another Face is kind of like a, a radio head or U2 sort of thing. Uh, they've got a song called Antifreeze and Aeroplanes that's about uh, drug addiction. And it's just, I mean, the lyrics, I mean, they had developed by this point such a great sense of lyrics and uh, musicianship. I mean, that was helped along w uh, with Bob Rock. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I absolutely love this album from top to bottom. Uh, some some uh, uh, Green Day sounding songs. There's a song called California that sounds a lot like Green Day or, you know, those uh, uh, pop punkish kind of uh, groups. Uh, Call the Doctor, I guess, would fit into that same category as well. But uh, then there are songs called uh, songs like Typical, which is kind of like nothing else. I, I would have a hard time comparing that to anything else. And then Walking Behind is another great one. But I mean, it's like here, I've named two thirds of the track listing already. So I don't want to make this video too long, but check it out. If you have not heard that album, trust me, trust your Uncle Tom, check it out. <clears throat> and then here's, well, I, I mentioned a couple minutes ago that uh, at the time I was big into collecting all their CD singles to get all their B-sides, you know, and stuff. And so I, but at, it came to a point where when I got all of them, I decided I needed to save shelf space. And so I put them all onto a home burned CDR. That is, uh, yes, the complete B-sides by the Moffats. Uh, it's actually a two disc compilation. So, yeah. And it's got, uh, there was uh, one song that was, um, you know, there was a trend back in the late 90s, early 2000s to, uh, to put a whole bunch of blank space and then another song at the end of the last track on the album. So the track itself was like 25, 30 minutes long. But, you know, there were only, there was like, you know, 80% of it was empty space. And so one of those I actually, you know, clipped, you know, trimmed off the dead space from that one song and put it in as what I called an isolated album track. On the, on the CD, so yes, I, I'm a bit of a uh, I was a bit of a CD making geek back then, wasn't I? Anyway, and then this was uh, I think this was the last maybe the last release that I ever we ever saw them put out, and it was uh, kind of a soft attempt. This was a promo CD that they were going to use to try and break into the American market, which um, I wish it would have happened. Oh no, this was actually after. This is actually before some modalities, because it does say new album coming this fall, and they show a picture of chapter one on there. So anyway, unfortunately, the attempted breakthrough into the States never really happened. Well, they, they were mildly successful with chapter one because it was released in the States. Uh, but I think if they were to release some modalities in the States, it would have been huge. But uh, yes, this was a promo CD that put, was put out by JCPenney uh, department stores. And so, and it's got... Um, a couple of tracks uh, or versions of songs that were not available anywhere else. And so that's the reason I'm keeping that one. But uh, yeah, a fun little collectible. And yes, sad to say, Submodalities, or as I call it, Submo, was their last album. And uh, they broke up after that and kind of went their separate ways. So. How I wish they'd made another album because Submo was so good. Anyway, enough of that. Avoid keep, uh, making the video too long. Uh, next up we have, actually you, you just saw a little bit of it a second ago. Um, what's her name? Janelle, Mon Janelle Monet. <laughs> a brain fart here. Dirty Computer, uh, the great album from what's what's been three years ago already. Something like that. Uh, yeah, very good stuff. My first exposure to Janelle Monet, and I have not yet taken the time to check out any of her previous stuff. So, But that was a great album. And then this one, it's not one of my favorites. I picked it up just recently, and I'm still kind of getting used to it. Uh, you saw me talk about it in a recent acquisitions video, Mondo Cosmo, uh, the album Plastic Soul. This was, was this from a thrift store? Maybe it was. Like, oh, no, I think it was at a, when I was at FYE the last time. Uh, I, it was one I just decided to take a chance on. Not bad. And then we have, oh, hey, hey, where are the monkeys? Uh, Bad joke, sorry. Uh, this is the Definitive Monkeys Collection. 25, no, 29 of their so songs on one CD. Yeah, it's not even two discs. It's one disc with 29 songs crammed on it. 
you know the monkey's hits. Let's, let's, I don't need to talk. I don't need to name any of them for you. And then we have the Moody Blues. Uh, this CD, I believe, was in my sister's collection. Uh, so you have to eat one of the two disc compilations from the Gold series. Uh, not one of my favorite groups, but being a disc from my sister's collection, it's got a little more meaning to me. Then we have, uh, at least for now, the one and only album that I have of Mandy Moore's. It is her cover album, Coverage. Uh, it, she does a great job on this. I don't know why I haven't excuse me, gone any further with uh, checking out her albums. But uh, yeah, Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's, the uh, Elton John song. Uh, I Feel the Earth Move, the uh, Carol King classic. Uh, Moon Shadow by Van Morrison. So, yeah. Anticipation, the Carly Simon song. And she does a great job on all of them. And this disc has a DVD that has a little bit of a, uh, a making of the album featurette on it, which is pretty cool. And I think it has a couple of music videos as well. Oh, one music video. And this one was uh, another gift from my friend, my little brother Noah. And it's one that he gave me while I was there visiting them in Oklahoma uh, last year. It's by John Moreland. Uh, it says his album LP5, a great album. I was very, very impressed. Um, have not yet gone on to uh, check out any of his other stuff, but uh, hopefully I will soon. There's, there's just so much stuff coming out constantly, you know. It just I, I don't give myself time to check out, you know, stuff from the stuff from the past. But anyway, next artist here is uh, another artist from Canada. Alanis Morissette, her blockbuster album, Jagged Little Pill. It needs no introduction. It needs no, no description. You guys know it. And then her MTV Unplugged album as well. And then uh, this is another artist that I, I had had more of her studio albums, but then I decided, you know, the singles are all that I really needed, so I ditched the other albums and got her collection. So... And I don't regret the decision. <clears throat> what can I say? Now, here we have a veteran artist. He was, what, in his 80s, I think, when he recorded this? Uh, oh, gosh, it's been seven years ago already. Giorgio Moroder uh, with his album Deja Vu. And this is kind of a uh, one of those um, uh, EDM song uh, albums that has a whole bunch of guest features on it. Uh, he features Sia, Charlie XCX, Mickey Echo, Kylie Minogue, uh, Britney Spears... Khalees, Foxes, and so yeah, a very good album. I've been thinking about getting the Japanese import, which has, what, four additional tracks on it. Have not uh, taken the opportunity to, to do that yet. And now here we have a country artist that is uh, that I enjoy very much, uh, Maren Morris. Here is her debut album, Hero. Her sophomore album, Girl which I thought was okay. It's my least favorite of her three. And her most recent album this year's Humble Quest. Very, very good album. I really enjoy that. I, I was a little worried after Girl, which I, I was not as fond of. But yeah, very good stuff. Then we have an artist. Um, I think I've talked about him before. He's great. And he has, again, he's only put out one album. Uh, at least as far as I know, he hasn't put out another one. Uh, well, one album, not counting this EP. Uh, this is... Uh, Matt Morris, uh, Backstage at Bonnaroo. Uh, this is a handful of acoustic performances uh, of songs, mostly songs that come from his album, When Everything Breaks Open. This is a, an amazing album. Uh, it's hard to describe this guy. He's kind of like, uh, I guess, what little, of, what little I've heard of Jack Johnson. Maybe it reminds me a little bit of Jack Johnson. Possibly a little bit of uh, Michael Franti. And he's, he's kind of got that kind of a spiritual sensibility about him. Uh, you know, not Christian necessarily, but, you know, the songs that kind of make you think in a bit of a spiritual realm. So if any of that sounds intriguing to you, I recommend Matt Morris, especially this album. Well, this is the only album. Uh, when Everything Breaks Open, awesome album. Uh, money is a good song. It talks about the evils of money and greed in our society. Uh <laughs> The Un-American, that's a, a good uh, bit of political satire. 
yeah. So, some people might agree with it. Some people might not. But you know. But he also knows how to lay down an awesome love song groove. And you do it for me is that song on this album. That's great. And he actually gets a production assist from Justin Timberlake. And that song, You Do It For Me, that's got kind of has Justin Timberlake's fingerprints on it. So, but yeah, don't pass up listening to that album if you get the chance. Write it down now so you can uh, reference it later. Anyway, and then we have an artist that I, I collected as of his first few albums. Uh, after that, he kind of, uh, I, he kind of lost me, so to speak. Uh, James Morrison, not the guy from The Doors. This is a different guy, a British singer-songwriter. But yes, You Give Me Something is his big hit off of this album. Wonderful World, I really enjoyed that one as well. And uh, uh, Call the Police was another good one. And this was, as I recall, it was a Barnes & Noble exclusive, or was it a Borders exclusive, that had two bonus tracks on it. You can see the bonus tracks down there. And his next album, which uh, I actually bought the original version, but then he put out a deluxe version later on with a bonus disc, and that's what this is here. Uh, Songs for You, Truths for Me. Another really good album from him. Picks up where this where his first album left off. And it even has kind of the same font that he uses for uh, the track listing. So, um, oh, Broken Strings is a duet with Nelly Furtado. That's great. And, uh, oh, uh, Once When I Was Little, that was a really good song. And, uh, oh, Fix the World Up for You. I really like that one, too. Great artist, really, really good artist. And I have his third album, The Awakening, uh, equally good. And uh, Slave to the Music is my favorite song on the album. That's, that's with no explanation necessary, right? Uh, so, but yeah, really good stuff. And so, yeah, that is James Morrison. And we have another Morrison here, Van Morrison. This is his uh, The Bang Masters uh, album. This is uh, re releases of his. Uh, early hits, Brown Eyed Girl is on here, one of the one of the best songs from that era, I think, Brown Eyed Girl, and uh, lots of other great hits, and of course I have Moon Dance. You cannot have any Van Morrison, in my opinion, without having Moon Dance. Classic, classic album. And then, uh, then there's a pretty good sized gap in the collection, and the next one I have is What's Wrong With This Picture? And I heard the song Oh, shoot, what's the name of the song? Uh, Once in a Blue Moon. I had heard that on a compilation CD and really enjoyed it. And that is that track is on this album, so I picked it up and rather enjoyed it. And uh, these next two CDs, I believe, were from my sister's collection. My sister was a Van, Van Morrison fan as well. Uh, we have Magic Time, as well as uh, At the Movies. This is songs, uh, songs from movies and... Uh, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what the at excuse me, what the at the movies title refers to. Oh, soundtrack hits. So yeah. So anyways, that's uh, that's my somewhat limited Van Morrison collection. Then we have uh, I'm not sure what made me pick this up. It might have been on the freebies shelf at House of Records. Uh Nana Muscuri, and I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um not sure how to describe her. She's kind of like a kind of a folk singer. She sings in a few different languages. There's French on here. Um, actually, I guess there's just English and French. Oh no, there's a uh, uh, the last song in here. I think is Spanish. It's either Spanish or Italian. So yeah, decent stuff. Nice and kind of refreshing sounding stuff. And then we have an artist I mentioned a few minutes ago. Yeah, at the beginning of this block of my collection, Jason Mraz. He featured on uh, Raul Midon's album. This is his first album, Waiting for My Rocket to Come, or his first major major label album, at least. And then Mr. A to Z. I think I actually like this one a little bit better than Waiting for My Rocket to Come. Uh, Life is Wonderful is one of my favorite songs. Uh, Geek in the Pink, I like that one. And uh, oh, what's the other one? Oh, Wordplay. I like that one as well. And then I found... I think this one I think I found in Pennsylvania when I was visiting a friend. 
Uh, this is the three disc deluxe album, uh, edition of uh, We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things. And yes, uh, disc one is the album. Disc two has a collection of EPs that he had released uh, previously, apparently. And disc three is a DVD, which I, I think it's a concert DVD. But yes, he features uh, James Morrison on one song. You just saw James Morrison there. Uh, Colby Calais is on another song. And uh, so, yeah. Some good stuff on this album here. And the last album of his that I bothered to pick up is Love is a Four-Letter Word. Good stuff. After this, he kind of, uh, his quality, in my opinion, kind of trailed off and uh, haven't really bothered picking up any of his other uh, albums. Uh, now, this next artist, uh, I can guarantee almost none of you have ever heard of. I'm not sure what made me stumble across him. I think it was probably a video online. I just really liked his stuff. It was uh, very catchy, very ear-grabbing. And for for an artist of, with such a young age, uh, it kind of impressed me. I mean, I don't know if, if this was how much of this was him himself and how much of it was his producers or handlers as far as, you know, how his songs came about. But uh, he's a good artist. Uh, Ulrich Munter is his name. He is a Swedish artist, I believe. And this is his debut album. I've got the Japanese edition with a uh, the OB strip, and it's got a bonus DVD on it as well. But uh, let's see. Sticks and Stones is a great song. That's the opening track. Uh, Boys Don't Cry, that's another good one. And he does a rendition... Uh, on this version of the album, the bonus track version, he does a rendition of Lady Gaga's Born This Way. So, very good stuff. Um, oh, Heroes in Defeat, Change Your Mind. That's another really good track on here. So, yeah. And then his... Uh, a An EP that he put out around the holiday season because Shine a Light is a holiday song. So that's another thing. Yeah, uh, just five... Five tracks on here, uh, a couple of remixes from his first album, and this one also has a DVD, and it's also got a OB strip. So, yeah, there you go. And then his third album, and the most recent one that I have bothered to pick up, is called Rooftop. And uh, yeah, some good stuff on here, and it's it, it's pop, you know, nothing really uh, earth shaking or envelope pushing in that regard, but it's just fun pop music. Um, San Francisco Says Hello is a great song. Uh, Tell the World I'm Here, that one's pretty good. Uh, Requiem is a good one, and so is Crash Test Dummy. So, and, Oh, and 845. That's, uh, that's a song about an uh, uh, encounter with a girl on a subway train. That's a good, that's a good song. I like that one. So, yeah. Good, good artist there. And then we have this one is another from... Uh, the uh, when I was collecting world idols, this guy was a runner up, I believe, from Sweden or Norway. Uh, Bjorn Johan Murray is his name, and this is uh, his debut and I think his only album so far, Airwaves. Uh, good stuff, not much to say beyond that about this album. And then here's one artist that I had gotten into quite a bit uh, a while ago, much more so than I am now. Uh, uh, before, you know, f between that, between then and now, basically, is what I'm trying to say, I dialed back and just kept his fir their first album, because that's all that I really, really enjoyed, Mute Math. And this is their self-titled album. Uh, this is the independent version. Uh, before before they were put out on a major label, uh, Just it, it had a song in here that I really enjoyed that was not on the major label version of the album. So, so yeah. Still like these guys, just not as much as I used to. And then uh, this is the next. This next one is another one that I found in. Uh, was it in Oklahoma City? I can't remember where. But when I was uh, visiting Noah, uh, you heard me talk about it in my Oklahoma Hall video. Mutlu is his name, and Living It is uh, the name of the album. Uh, I believe I believe it's his only album so far. But yes, he features Daryl Hall and G Love and Amos Lee on here. I actually just picked up. A CD by Amos Lee from the dollar section at Epic Seconds. So now I, I have something by all three of those artists. I just realized that. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And then we have another favorite artist of mine that I've talked about before, uh, Laura Mvula. And this is her 
debut album, Sing to the Moon, and this is a uh, uh, deluxe version that has two CDs. Uh, a while ago, I'd had her first, uh, the, the original album, the original version of the album, which only had one disc, but I decided to upgrade to the two-disc version. And then we have the special edition of her sophomore album, The Dreaming Room. Uh, it's it's just one disc, but it has a handful of, uh, at least I think it's just one disc. Yeah, but it has a whole bunch of uh, bonus tracks on there. It's, it's a, a loaded album as well. And then her most recent album, which I absolutely loved, it was in, was it in my top five uh, last year? Uh, Pink Moon. It's, no. Pink Noise, sorry. <laughs> I, that's, yeah, Pink Moon is a Nick Drake album, sorry. But the, yes, Pink Noise wonderful fantastic album this um her first two albums were a bit more had a bit more world music elements more maybe more like sade but this has more slightly more um r&b elements in it uh, but still it's excellent great fantastic music uh laura mvula is still a favorite artist of mine uh, a favorite female artist of mine so good stuff then we have i think this one was given to me by noah as well uh my chemical romance I had had it a long time ago, didn't think much of it, but I decided, uh, since he offered it up to me, I decided to tr give it another try, and uh, I liked it a little bit more the second time around. So, uh, yes, the uh, uh, the Black Parade, obviously, by as if you couldn't tell by the cover art. Then we have, I think this was a uh, uh, bargain bag CD, Billy Myers, uh, Growing Pains. I think this was her debut album. Very good R&B kind of stuff. I like that one. And then I think I talked about this one. Uh, this was, I think, a thrift, thrift store. A thrift store. Frif. F-R-I-F. Thrift store. Purchase. Uh, Alana Miles. Uh, her debut album. And uh, the song Black Velvet is the song she is most famous for. So. Then we're coming into another fairly extensive discography uh, by a band that I rediscovered oh, about three years ago. Not a Surf. Uh, this is their debut album, High Low. Some great, great indie rock on these albums. And their sophomore album, The Proximity Effect. <clears throat> and then probably my favorite album, Let Go. Uh, my favorite of theirs. Or was it their next one? I can't remember. No, I think it was this one. Let Go. This, the, the names of the songs are not ringing a bell with me. Once I listened to it, it would probably bring back more memories. And then the album, The Weight is a Gift. And uh, the song Always Love is the first song of theirs that I heard, and that's kind of what, what spurred me on to check them out. And Always Love is on this album. So, And then proceeding right along with their album, Lucky. And one of my favorite album titles of all time, The Stars Are Indifferent to Astronomy. I love the title of that album. And then their next, their second most recent album, uh... You Know Who You Are, and their most recent album I actually have on vinyl. So, good stuff. And then coming up on, uh, coming up to the end, toward the end here, an artist that I've just been talking about recently, uh, was into him a long time ago, his first two albums, he dropped off my radar for a long time, then I re reintroduced myself to him uh, right about the time of my Oklahoma trip last year, uh, Matt Nathanson, excellent singer-songwriter, uh, Beneath These Fireworks is the name of this album. And then Some Mad Hope, the follow-up to that album. And since then I picked up a couple more. Uh, Modern Love, another good one. And Last of the Great Pretenders. And his most recent album, which was released this year, and you will be seeing this one in my uh, year-end spectacular issue as well, Boston Accent. That is his newest album. And then the last CD in this block. It's actually, I, I hated to chop this one in half because I only have two albums by this artist. So you're going to see one here and one in the next chapter. But I want to try and keep the, each block at 90 CDs. So that's why I'm splitting it up. Uh, and this is another not-so-guilty pleasure. It's a band called Natural. And this was uh, one of the last projects by uh, boy band guru uh, Lou Perlman, the uh, uh, eventually disgraced and now deceased boy band mogul Lou, per Lou Perlman. Uh, this was a group that uh, ostensibly played their own, their own instruments, but I 
listening to it, I kind of have my doubts because it's still, it's a little too polished sounding to, for them to have been playing their own instruments. But anyway, Lou Pearlman uh, brought together NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, and a few other boy bands, as well as Natural. So yes, uh, it is so, sort of rock, but it's very, very poppy rock. Uh, but still, it's it's a not-so-guilty pleasure, I have to admit. Um, they cover the song Can't Live Without Your Love and Affection, which was a Nelson song, I believe. Uh, the the, duet, the uh, soft rock or pop rock duo from the 90s, I think. Uh, the Sons of uh, Ricky Nelson. And uh, see, there was another song out the, on here that I thought, oh, I Count the Minutes. And that was one of my favorite songs on this album. I didn't realize until years later that uh, Ricky Martin had done, done the song on one of his albums. And I think it was Ricky Martin that did, did it first. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. But uh, anyway, what can I say? I've I've got plenty of guilty pleasures, not so guilty pleasures, in my collection. So, so sue me, right? Anyway, so that'll do it for Chapter 14 of my whole darn CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.